Hello, it's Adam Demuth. Today I want to talk about two design concepts I enjoy using. Differential gear tooth indexing and elastic averaging. And how when we take these two concepts and merge them, we can arrive at a system whose overall accuracy is better than its individual components. This idea is really useful with 3D printing, where a individual 3D printed component isn't all that accurate when compared to a precision machined component. So we're going to take a look at rotary differential tooth indexing. We're going to take a look at how that can be applied to linear applications and then elastic averaging and the effects it has on these things. So enjoy. So if you're familiar with differential tooth indexing, you might have used a product from somebody like AA Gauge or More Tool. In my case, New Bold Precision. I like the new bolt differential indexers because the gears are plastic. And that seems like a really poor choice for precision work at first, but consider these are used in a grinding environment. So if a speck of grind score were to get in there, it's much more likely to embed into the plastic and allow it to comply accurately. Whereas on a steel face, it would hold up the works. Uh, the plastic is also easier to get everything to average out. So Technically, they're supposed to be a tooth every degree. Let's say one of them is a degree in a couple minutes. Uh, it's going to stretch or squeeze, and that effect, that error, will get averaged out over the total number of teeth. Uh, and elastic averaging kind of works the opposite of kinematics, where the more teeth you have in contact, the less the effect of the outlier is. It gets averaged over a higher number of teeth. Uh, and because there's so many teeth in contact, it's actually quite stiff in terms of coupling power compared to a kinematic joint. So just a quick look at how like the new bolt indexer works. And most of the differential tooth indexers work in a similar fashion. Let's get it all back to zero. The first dial is degrees and there's a tooth every degree. You can see we can make one degree moves. Second dial is a minute. Now you can't have a tooth every minute. Uh, the teeth would be impractically small. So there's a tooth every one minute, one degree. Easy solution. Third dial is seconds. You definitely can't have a tooth every second. So there's a tooth every one degree, one second. Now let's say you want to make a minute move. Well, as we just discussed, it's a minute and a degree. So you move forward a minute and degree and then you move back a minute, and the advancement is the difference in the gear pitch between the two. So that's differential gear advancement in a nutshell. Uh, and the, the concept of differential indexing is almost always applied in a rotary fashion, but I, I like it for linear work. I think it's kind of interesting there. And so let's take a look at how it performs as a 3D print in a linear application. We have our linear differential indexer set up under the Heidenheim. We're going to see how this system works. Get zeroed out. So the way it adjusts is the adapter plate moves forward one tooth, and then the carriage moves backwards however many tooth uh, the adapter has moved forward. So the adapter has a pitch on its teeth of 5 millimeters. The carriage has a pitch of 4.9 millimeters. So when we move forward 5 and backwards 4.9, that means we've made an advancement of 0.1 millimeters. Or about 1.8 microns shy of that. So let's see what two increments forward looks like. One two, then we come backwards, one, two. Put our lock back in. So we should be 0.3 millimeters advanced, or 3.4 microns shy of that. Let's go back to zero.
So within two and a half microns of repeating to its zero position. So as you saw earlier, I have to put a little preload on the system prior to measuring. And that's because without the preload, the high spots of the gears will just sit. They, they won't allow the other gears to make contact and the elastic averaging won't occur. So when we put pressure on it, all the gears make contact and the averaging happens. Let's say your system, for whatever reason, can't accept that much of a load. You can help out your gear by making it more compliant, by making the wells between gears deeper and even putting a slot in the tooth. So that, that adds compliance and increases the averaging effect. Also, this particular stage is just moves in 0.1 millimeter increments, but um, you need not limit yourself to that. Let's say you're an inch, you could do 0.1 inch, 10 thou, 1 thou. You could have multiple stages. Uh, and this is mostly for incremental accuracy. I want to move a little bit, but let's say you want absolute accuracy over a longer span. Something you could do is buy a commercial gear rack and add your 3D prints on top of that. And now all of a sudden you can have as much travel for your first stage as you want. And that could be useful for something like a saw stop, for example. You could uh, buy a 0.1 inch pitch gear rack and set your carriage anywhere on it and then have like a 10 thou second carriage. And, and so very quickly, very accurately, you can have a very rigid stop set anywhere along the length of that gear rack. So keep that in mind. So just a couple of closing notes. Um, things I didn't bother making, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, the gears, nothing's constraining them in one axis. They can slide. If you need that to not be the case, you can do a herringbone pattern and it'll be constrained side to side and just be allowed to increment forward and backwards. Uh, but also along the lines, you can make a gear grid, have gears going in 90 degrees perpendicular to one another, and that allows you to move in X and Y axis as well. Eh, granted, those are both kind of limited cases, as is this whole system. I'm not under any illusions about how useful this is. Um, I sat and thought about it for a while, and there's very, very few places it could be employed, but the saw stop thing, something along that lines, I think has merit. Uh, the, also the others, automation machinery, say you have a small press head and you don't necessarily want to move under operation. Press heads have a lot of vibrations, things like micrometer dials come loose all the time, but you do need to be able to adjust it for setup or say seasonality, it's a little warmer in the summer and the frame of the machine grows. Uh, so being able to move it 10, 20, 30 microns and accommodate that but not have to worry about backing off because you have such a stiff, rigid mount. That's pretty handy. Um, but yeah, overall, it's, uh, it's more of a novelty than anything. But uh, I was really impressed how well 3D printing did in terms of accuracy. Um, but that's going to come down to your 3D printer. You might have to scale and mess around with it some. The other tip I will give you, print everything in one setup, spaced going the same direction. Don't print like this. If your Y and X accuracies are not the same, it's going to give you some weird pitch of the two. Uh, whereas if you print in the same setup, going the same direction, they should have relatively the same pitch errors. So um, yeah, again, if you take advantage of this, I'd love to see it. Uh, so if not, if you've noticed the sound quality was better today, we have Dylan Jackson of Proteum Machine to thank for that. Uh, Dylan's a big member of the online machinist community. He hosts the With Intolerance podcast and is all around a good guy. And I really like to thank him for the new microphone. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.